Good evening and welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce and good evening, Trisha Walsh. Nice to have you back with us. Thank you, Suzette. And it's you look great. fantastic. It's great to be back. <laughs> and here we are, um, closing in on the fall and winter. I know, I know yeah. it's been beautiful out, but we have to say it is fall and winter. I know. Uh, it's hard up. to believe, but yes. Yeah. finally talking about the fall things yeah. and actually past the fall things we're going That's into right. our winter things so what is what is actually coming up i know it's it's very exciting for the uh, chamber of commerce right now we've got a lot of things going on yes so we're very busy planning we're already planning 2016 but right now we are yes okay. we at the chamber are. are making sure that 2016 is going to be filled with great events but <coughs> one thing that we do have going on is mystic restaurant week which is november 9th through the 15th cool. uh participating restaurants um in the greater mystic area will offer either a price fixed menu or for lunch and dinner or some sort of a special to participate in that it's um we have a facebook page mysticrestaurantweek.com um is the website and then on facebook facebook mystic restaurant week uh i encourage you to check it out and we want to thank our wonderful sponsor for that potion and potion yeah fantastic yes. okay susan thank you once again and what's nice about restaurant week too if you haven't had the opportunity to visit i think mystic has one of the best restaurants we have the best restaurants and if you hadn't had the opportunity to to go down into a couple of restaurants which you haven't visited in the past or you want to try some new ones it gives you an opportunity to just get that taste Absolutely. I mean, especially, you know, what we do is we always do one day as a staff lunch. Yes. And so you we'll do. go out. Yes. Is, I, I, well, you're not well, staff. Well, I know I'm you're not staff, staff, but I thought I'd get invited. <laughs> <You're> uh, but <laughs> anyways, what day is that, Tricia? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, definitely check out mysticrestaurantweek.com. They'll list all the participating restaurants and um, mysticchamber.org on our website. We'll link right to that as well. Okay, and then we have the annual dinner coming up. Annual dinner, December 3rd. It is going to be a great gala. We are looking yeah, forward to it. That's so, going to be fantastic. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that, Tricia. Thank you for uh, coming back and, and hosting again. So we have some great people on tonight, and I, I may get this wrong. There's a whole story to the name of this uh, organization, which I happen to love. Um, but I think we're, we're going to introduce the chorus of Westerly. Did I get that right? Correct, and we're going to introduce the very important people of the, the chorus, chorus of, of Westerly. Westerly. So why don't we just get right into that, yeah, Tricia? Yeah. So I'm um, pleased to welcome Andrew Howell, the course, or the music director, rather. We have Ryan Saunders, the executive director, and we have Ashley Shea, the patron services manager. So um, welcome to us. all Thanks of you. Yeah. Thanks yes. so welcome. Nice yes. And uh, now, Ashley, I know you're brand new to yeah. the chorus. Yeah. How long have you been with the chorus now? Um, I think it's been about two months, Okay. Almost. Two months? One month? One month. Feels One like month. two months. It, it seems it like two like months, months, right? It's like two months. I love so. You've been around. You've been around. Maybe I've lived here for two you've months, but I've yeah. worked there for one month. Yeah. 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 Now, so what does the patron services, what does that entail? So, I mean, my job, um, first of all, is I, I manage the box office and ticket sales for the Forest of Westerly. Um, I sort of work as some support for Ryan and support for Andrew um, and and primarily just taking care of our chorus members and taking care of our patrons making sure that everybody's happy um, you know if they need anything just kind of being there um, for our patrons and uh, the members of our chorus and and the children and their families as well so just sort of being that link to uh, so how long has the chorus of Wesley been in existence well, we're in our 57th season right now, or we just okay. started our fifth. So uh, George Kent founded the chorus That's in 1959 yeah. when he was 21, and uh, he retired in, in 2012. Yeah, and, unbelievable. Uh, we were fortunate enough to find Andrew Howell, who actually studied with George uh, at the University of Rhode Island, to come in and take over for him. Uh, so he's now, Andrew's starting his fourth season. So it's been quite a ride yeah. uh, 57 years later, but here we are. <laughs> so Andrew, I, I just, a, and, and you heard it here, but just a Quick question: Will there be fifty some odd years uh, for you for the chorus? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Some lifetime contracts. But the chorus have... will be going in fifty yeah. years. I don't know if I'll be at yeah. the helm, but I will stay on for a while. But you know, this—it's got to be your passion. It has to be something. I mean, you're you're coming sort of full circle, having uh, worked and studied with George, and you're coming really full circle. Absolutely. And even before that, I, I started singing in the chorus as a treble, a young boy, okay. when I was twelve years old in 1995. Mm -hmm. So I. I grew up through the ranks of it. I experienced the organization and, and everything that was a part of it. I met my wife in the chorus. I've got a lot of 
uh, tangled web in the chorus. Right. So um, you were destined. This is a sort of a destined. I mean, it's it, it's just ironic. It's that- a wonderful way to put it, but I, I don't know if it was destiny or not. Okay. Uh, the process that I went through was grueling, as would be okay. expected, and thankfully I was the one who they selected in the end to move the chorus forward in this. But taking over for someone who had been there for 53 years, even knowing the, you know, the organization and knowing him and having worked with him, it's been quite a curve, but it's been a, a wonderful curve. experience. I'm, people have finally stopped telling me the large size of shoes that I need to fill, and I think I'm just wearing my own shoes now, which Yeah, is but I, nice. I think that is <laughs> probably something that um, would be natural for uh, the community and the organization to do those comparisons. However, right. I, from what I understand uh, through the community, that you are just doing a fantastic job. Thank you very much. We're happy to have well, you. Well, the chorus is doing very yeah. well, and they are rising to all of the challenges that I'm setting for them. It's fantastic. One thing, I mean, we're so entrenched. Uh, we understand what the course is, what you guys do, what your events are um, at the chamber, because we work together, Suzette, sure. you know, in the community. But we reach a greater demographic on this sh- TV show. So maybe um, you could just explain to the viewer what exactly is the course of Westerly. It's perfect. You want to take this? You want me no, to? No, you go ahead. <laughs> the chorus is a. It's about. It's about right now a 200 voice symphonic choral organization. Um, that presents in a, in a season a very large performance season of masterworks. Um, so it, we almost always perform with full symphony orchestra. Occasionally we'll do a concert a cappella or a small ensemble. Um, you find choruses similar to us in terms of the works that we're performing in major cities. Rarely do you find it in a, in a town as small as Westerly. Right. Um, what makes us unique beyond the fact that we're in this community here doing this music is that about half of our membership are children who are the age between the ages 8 and 18. Um, there's only one other country, chorus in the U.S. that has that model. Our model is very actually European-based. So that means a, a child singer um, is treated with equal rank to once they pass certain levels of tests and proficiency as an adult singer. So uh, an adult singer who could be singing in college and then going off to being in a big, you know, the Chicago Symphony Chorus or something and get once one shot in their life to sing the Verdi Requiem, for example, um, here in Westerly, we're providing children with that opportunity as well. So when we perform, you see children and adults singing side by side, and that's a very, very unique and special thing. Um, the other big thing that's very different and unique about us is that we happen to own our own performance venue, uh, the George Kent Performance Hall. Right. Um, and we are one of three choruses in the U.S. that actually owns a space, their own space. Um, take all that together and that we're also a presenting organization. Very often you see choruses attached, symphonic choruses attached to a symphony. The Tanglewood Festival Chorus is the Boston Symphony Orchestra's resident chorus. Um, You know, the San Francisco Chorus, things like that. They're attached to the big symphonies out there. But we're the lead organization, so we present the season. We schedule all the works. You know, we sell all the tickets. We raise all the money. Mm -hmm. Um, We're an operation that, quite frankly, shouldn't happen in this particular community in Stonington and and in Westerly. And it's high-level arts, though, that's happening right here. And the fact that it's sustained and um, grown for 57 years is is borderline miraculous. And I'm not just tooting our own horns, but there's every reason why, over that period of time, we should have collapsed as an organization in terms of the competition just around us. Mm -hmm. Um, But we haven't. And that that comes to great leadership that we've had, not, not just from George Kent and his five decades doing this, but so many supporting members of the community that have been on our boards or you know, help guide us through periods, um, and members in both uh, the Connecticut and Rhode Island state delegation who've helped us find arts money for generations, and also to Andrew in, in terms of his work coming out here. A- Andrew Howell is actually our best success story ever because um, Andrew, Andrew and his mom moved into the area when he was a, just before he was a teenager, and Andrew didn't have any particular background or experience in music before that happened. Um, he was a, a, a child that we recruited in. I'm not we, I was a teenager then, but the chorus recruited right. in. Um, and gave him access and exposure to just singing and performing this great level of music. And that completely changed his life. I mean, he Absolutely. said he met his wife, but you know, his whole life was created out of the chorus. Right. And th- when, it has shaped my life. when the founders put this all together in the 50s and 60s, their goal was for the kids all around, all, in all these communities around here, to have a chance to do something really, really special with music as the vehicle. So it would make their lives that much better and give them focus. Well, here 
you know, the chorus actually trained the next director itself. And so, right, and the next generation. Precisely. Next so generation. just like Andrew, right. I'm also a former chorus right. child, too, that the same way. My, my, my instruction, you know, I had all the music training as well, mm-hmm. but not at the level. This, I don't have the talent nearly that this guy has in it. But I was taught in things like fundraising. You know, I was working a fundraiser when I was 13 years old, uh, you know, learning arts administration from folks when I was 16. So... It's it's this it's it's both this professional musical organization and this amazing community organization that has profound impact across all of Southern New England, and that's that's what we're about. So it's you know you just put that he just put that so eloquently yeah. that I well, just thank you. you know and, and, and <laughs> Trisha to you know to the point where uh, she was saying you know you have a broader uh, audience, and I'm going to get much. back to your to your audience as well, but. For, some, for people like Trisha and I who are also entrenched in this community, have grown up in this community, and basically have done what the two of you have done, yeah. said, you look at, you know, Stonington, Mystic, uh, Westerly, Pawkatuck, and, you know, the borders of Rhode Island, this is where we want to stay, this is where we want to build our home, this is where we want to work, uh, and this is our passion. For us at the Chamber, the Chorus of Westerly, we, we, we own it. Mm-hmm. You're us. You and we are you. So, you know, so for the broader... Um, uh, audience out there, uh, you know, I encourage all of you to to get online to see what they do because uh, for our parameters, we know just how great the course of Westerly is, and of course, we get back to talking about your facility and mm-hmm. owning that facility, mm-hmm. which is a how many places? I mean, how many organizations can can say that? And and we'll get to the weddings sure, and things sure. that you can actually have there and the uh, receptions. But tell us, you know, exactly. Who who are your audiences? I mean, who are these people that come to see you? And and you know, um, every year after year after year, uh, look at this organization. Say we're going to be part of it. Who are these people? Yeah, well, we sing in front of about thirty thousand people every year. That's um, amazing. Sometimes more, sometimes yeah. sometimes a little less. But uh, the bulk of that is about twenty twenty five thousand. That comes with our annual summer pops performance, which is now see, in, I didn't know that in downtown Westerly every year. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that. Big of a, uh, an audience. It's that so big of an it's, yeah. that's in, that, it's that big of an audience. Wow! And um, we've done some demographic surveys on that, and about forty percent of the, that audience actually comes from the Connecticut side, and sixty from the uh, the westerly side. And most of them come from either uh, New London County on the Connecticut side and Washington County on the Rhode Island side. But we get people that come as far away as you know Greenwich and New York and Pennsylvania. Some people make a pilgrimage every year, and folks that come from Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. Uh, but that's you know that that's a huge. That is a huge, it's a $100,000 concert that we put on every year in the park. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big community block party. It's a wonderful thing that we do. And it's free. Like every, <laughs> every, every year, that's, it's yeah. free. Um, in terms of our in-house season, if you will, inside of the facility, um, we're, we're getting audience. We just had to, we're writing grants all the time, like I'm sure you guys have to know mm-hmm. the chamber. So we just did our most recent demographic survey. And it's something crazy, like 71 different towns in Connecticut and Rhode Island were audience members coming into chorus of westerly events uh, it's very dominated by as you would imagine folks coming from westerly and from stonington but we have a we have a large group in um, all the villages in stonington but we have a large group of folks that come over from new london and from groton on the connecticut side and going up to willimantic and places like that come in there um it's it's just a, it's a very the core is the core is probably within maybe a 10 mile shot of the of downtown westerly um, but it's 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 very broad reaching, and that is a reflection of the membership, because the membership comes from almost the same demographics of town as I think it's something like 42 different towns. The members come from between the two states, um, so it's neat because particularly for the children, because you have these hundred kids, and they're not all coming from one particular school. They'll have friends that live all over the place, so they connect back and forth. Right. As a singer growing up myself, and there, you know, many of my best friends were in the the Cherroho School District, or uh, you know, went to Fitch. Or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, I went to Stony. I was a Stonington High School graduate, mm-hmm. so you know, it was neat to have friends that were all over Southern New England. But that speaks to kind of how it's bec- the chorus has really become this sort of not just this Westerly Rhode Island based organization, but this Southern New England based organization. Um, very, very broad reaching. So is that sort of where the chorus of Wesley's direction um, down the line is to get a broader audience? Is that somehow? Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Part of the strategic you know, it's, plan. It, it, it certainly is one of the, um, and I can Andrew can speak to this a little bit more. Um, one of the, it, it's 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 hard for us to get by the Thames River. To, to be frank, you know, that's, <laughs> um, as a business owner in Mystic, Connecticut, and lived all my life in Mystic, and, and, and it's I, a, it, here's the thing, and I, I will tell you, it's <laughs> it's it's a mindset. Yes. I mean, like yesterday, mm-hmm. my husband said, "Let's go to let's go out to lunch. It's a beautiful day." And when I mentioned a place over the Gold Star Memorial Bridge, he said, oh, we got to go over a bridge. <laughs> we can't go there. Let's go to Westerly. <laughs> a big bridge, too. That's a big bridge. A big I, bridge. Mean, I, I mean, wait a minute. It's, you know, it's five, five minutes. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the, a but, the bridge. Um, when it, but, you know, it, that's, that is our biggest challenge. And, and on the Rhode Island side going north, there seems to be something before the, the, the airport up there that oh. protects us. And heaven forbid we should go to Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that Andrew's been working on, he could talk about it, is we've been trying to develop a a training choir program or, if you will, a minor league system that it's our hope to start to expand this into the school systems around here. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, So looking at where we are as a chorus now, and and if you've seen us, you've seen us on those risers, and we're just, you know, packed in there like sardines, and we are really quite... uh, quite full in terms of our singing membership right now. So we've been looking at ways to expand our footprint. One of those ways is a program that we've now been running for three years um, that is allowing us to reach younger children. So we have a music and movement program, which we are just about to start on um, actually October 17th, if anyone would like to sign up their three to six year olds, um, at the YMCA in Westerly. So we're now expanding out of our building and uh, partnering up with the YMCA for that. So that gives us a reach into even younger children than eight, which is the typical age that children are able to start singing in the chorus. Um, Beyond that, we've started the discussions with the Westerly and Stonington school systems about trying to get into the schools themselves for an after-school choral program. And if we can expand that entry-level point to give children access to the choral experience we're looking to supplement the programs that they already have, not overtake what they're already doing in the school, um, then we can give a little bit more to the community and expand what we're able to do as an organization. We've found very good partners with um, uh, the superintendent of the Westerly Public School System and Van Riley over here in mm-hmm. the Stonington yeah, Public Schools. In fact, yeah. Van Riley has just come on our board of directors oh, that's and, great. And, and, yeah. and helped initiate this I'm conversation. I'm going to call him of, up and congratulate him. <laughs> well, one of the ways we, we look at audience building is by connecting with more and more families and reaching Absolutely. that footprint out a little bit more and more because once we can kind of get them into the door in terms of their family being aware of what we're trying to do or, or you know, a trust, that, that's how we can build audiences, you know, to, to see this is happening at Westerly. But we're really trying to use the choruses you know, turn it into sort of the hub of the wheel in terms of artistic activity that's happening around here. You know, we've been around for a long time. People have invested in us. Now it's time for us to invest back in the community and expand outside of our building and do these satellite programs and things like that. And that's how you build new audiences and get new people involved and donors and things like that. So very exciting. Cool. And one thing that you were talking about was having members and being kind of somewhat of a membership-based organization. Um... How does one become a member? What do you do? You have what, what he means by members is singing members. Singing members. Sing. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. We have subs- we have subs- we have subscribers. You, okay. Uh, yep. Who can subscribe to all of our events? Um, mm-hmm. So we have you know we you can sub- you can go to an event as it by an individual ticket or you could subscribe and Ashley is happy to mm-hmm. help you out at any point in time on that um, or uh, the singing members. So okay. when we say members. S- being a, a singing member of the chorus is, is more than just coming to rehearsal and, and, and having your music in front of you and rehearsing. I mean, you're, you're part of the organization. You help us out when we have fundraisers. You, you help us market the events. Um, and we have expectations. And there's also a level, and Andrews Institute of this, of music education that they're all getting inside of their rehearsal process. So we try to give them more than just, you're just a singer up on the risers. Um, but when we say that an adult and a child are considered equal members, you know, we expect when adults singing a major work, you're going to be at these rehearsals, you're going to have your music learned to this point, and in performance, you're going to act at this level of professionalism, just like the professionals down the orchestra. We treat the children the exact same way. So you and I could be singing for 20 years and be, you know, have vocal degrees and things like that. 
but the kid who's 12 years old right next to us, we're gonna, it doesn't matter that they're 12, we treat them just like Absolutely. an adult to give them that yeah. experience. So, but that's, that's a good so we thing. keep them, we consider them again equal, equal right. members. And Sets that's, the bar high. right, and that's really where we're different from other choruses in the US. I mean, they just, you just, you see children's choruses out there that'll come in and sing their own concert or sing on a major work with, a, with an adult choir or symphonic concert, you, you don't see them merge together. So, Asha, tell us some of the events that are up and coming. Um, our fall concert is November 22nd. It's our fall classical concert, mm -hmm. I believe. And there'll be works from Mozart, Schubert, and Haydn. It is kind of a youthful masters of the classical era concert. All of the works that are on the program were written when the composers were quite young. Haydn was only 17 when he wrote the work that we're doing. Wow. I think Mozart was 23, which was actually kind of old for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And Schubert, I believe, was 18 when he wrote the Mass in G. Which a so. lot of people don't know that, but yeah, yeah right. that's fantastic. Yeah. There's our Christmas Pops concert mm -hmm. on that's December 20th. The, yeah, mm -hmm. the popular one. And I'm very excited. Yeah. I mean, I'm, these are going to be my first experience. Oh, you're going to have a first great experience. time. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward forward to it. So um, if you want to talk about the Christmas We're Pops program. Really cool at Pops. You go. No, you go for it. <laughs> so uh, one of the uh, pieces that we've done a few times in the past is called the Musicological Journey Through the Twelve Days of Christmas. So it's the familiar twelve days that you expect, um, but each one has a flavor from a different era. So it starts from early Gregorian chant and goes all the way up to Stars and Stripes Forever for movement uh, for the twelfth mm -hmm. day of Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, well, this year we're adding a theatrical element with Darren Wood of Flock Theater, who has done Twelfth Night yes. for us in the past. He's coming in to work with us on Christmas Pops to kind of make it Christmas pop spectacular. Um, and we're going to have a procession and costumes and, and all of that along with this. So it should be a, a wild Staging adventure. Staging the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. I think that's fabulous. That's never Me been done. <laughs> no, Who's, OK, that's never been done before. It, we haven't done it with no, this before, no. I, so that's the brainstorm of who? I guess me. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it was my idea. <laughs> No, no, it was it was, it was Andrew's idea, and, and working with with Darren. I mean, we um, we're, we're not doing Twelfth Night this year, but Darren, we are going to give everyone a, a big spectacle. Yeah. Um, and Darren Wood is 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 a genius, quite frankly, mm -hmm. with staging and seeing things. And even as Darren and Andrew explained to me how they were going to do this with a sixty piece orchestra in the middle of it and <laughs> stage the Twelve Days of Christmas and have Christmas trees and well, I'm, dogs I'm very and familiar with it. <laughs> I, 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 I've seen the I've seen a lot of scribbles on pieces of paper yeah, and they've yeah. got it in their heads, but it, <laughs> yeah. it should, it'll work. It'll work, and it should be if it's anything like what these two have come up with before. <laughs> it's going to be beyond yeah. spectacular. Just as you were speaking about that and the whole theatrics, I'm thinking about sitting there and I just know the facility so mm -hmm. well. I'm thinking, wow, how, how is that all going to happen? You'll have um, to come and find out. Well, I'm going to come and find out because it's, it's certainly one of my favorite nights, too, yeah. uh, my husband. It's really funny because I think a few years ago, uh, I don't know, I had gotten some tickets, and uh, I don't know how I got to it, whether it was given to me uh, by a customer. Anyways, I, I brought a friend, and I turned around, and she was actually <laughs> she was crying. I was like, wow. I mean, that's how moved she was during the whole... Mm -hmm. The whole night, I, and I hear him, I was just in awe, and she's crying. And I thought, wow, to bring somebody to actual tears, uh, happy tears, yeah. is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. she said, you know, Christmas is in like five days or whatever she said, and she said, I've, you know, just going through some really difficult times, and I needed to be here, and this was so inspiring that I can just go about and, and do whatever I, whatever challenges come my way that this, <laughs> I was like, "This are yeah. free tickets. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't know how I got yeah. these tickets, but, but you're welcome. Anyways, it's a very inspiring evening. And, and if many... anybody has not been to at least this particular uh, event in this show, it's, I think it's when you go into the Christmas season, no matter what religion you are or no matter what you believe in or what, what you're going through during your, you know, mm -hmm. uh, your life, you have to see this because for at least a few hours, you will forget about everything. Right. You believe me, it'll come yeah, we back. We have to many you. patrons uh, who, for them, it is a center point of the Christmas season. It and is. really kicks it off. It really is. And we should announce a Sunday, December twentieth, is the date of right. yes. that mm -hmm. event. Yeah. Um, so it is five days before Christmas. Perfect way to kick off your holiday season. Great gifts to give tickets mm -hmm. to yes. so that you... Yes, how I got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and it's, it's fantastic. That, you know, it's definitely something that's really exciting. Before that, the date of the classical concert... Uh, 
I'm sorry, classical right. chorus <laughs> is sure. November uh, 22nd, That's you correct. were mentioning. So definitely uh, chorusofwesterly.org for yep. the uh, website. And can you buy tickets online or would they call you and? Uh, yeah, both. Okay. Tickets are available online or I am in the office, uh, business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So people can reach out to me, call me, email, whatever's most convenient. But um, I'm happy and to sell tickets. We have just a online. few minutes, but I yeah. want, I mean, for the people that don't know where um, your place is, can you just kind of tell them the address too? Um, 119 High Street. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley told us not to ask any hard questions, and I just thought, I just thought that was so perfect. Down. I just thought that that was great. When she, I know she looked at Andrew and Ryan said, "Hi, sure. Okay, we, we got that right." Um, but thank you, uh, all of you, for uh, for being on the show this evening. It's it's always our pleasure um, to host mm -hmm. the chorus of Thank West. you for, Thanks for us. having us. Thank you for doing such a great job, Ryan. You're going to be you. entrenched there forever. And and actually, <laughs> you know, um, we're we're gonna we're gonna see you because it's a great organization. It is. Um, I feel to, very lucky to be a yeah, part of it. Yeah. So, yeah. And just real quick about the facility that can rent it out. Yes, I will just do my own plug for <laughs> the facility. Uh, as we've I been left this to for do. last. Um, the facility facility is available for rental and I am proud to say that I was actually had my wedding reception at yeah. the course of Westerly and it's just it's such a beautiful and unique spot um it's like a hidden gem because people don't think of it as right. a space right. like a rental space so Anywhere that's something you would follow up with Ashley about if that's something you're interested in having a birthday party there any type of event um it's just you don't have to do much because the space itself is already it's just it gorgeous. Is. Yeah. So yeah. Um, definitely a plug for that. Uh, we just celebrated our four-year anniversary, so Congratulations. hard yes. to believe that. <laughs> and it all started there. Yes. <laughs> um, but anyways, Trish, is so nice to see you. Good to see you. Um, welcome back. Andrew, Ryan, Ashley, we'll see you again either. No, it would be December 20th. Yeah. Sounds great. So the chorus, Westerly, we are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, Mystic Matters. Good evening.